Welcome back to VIX Projects everyone. Now we've had our Powerwall for a little while now, so today we're going to look at how it's been going. So to recap on last time, we got some old 18650 batteries off the net, we made them into some packs, assembled them onto our Powerwall, and it pretty much works. I and mean, we've got some lights in here. But there were three things that we needed to look at for our power wall. First, the solar panel. Second, the charge controller. And third, actually getting some power out of our power wall. So basically you got nothing right. All right, everyone's a critic. Let's start off with those solar panels. So back when it was just this battery powering the shed, all we needed was this little solar panel and a diode. But when we moved over to our new power wall, this guy couldn't even produce enough power to power the solar charger itself and keep that running. So our batteries were just dropping and dropping and dropping. So we had to upgrade and our new solar panel. However, we found in the winter, this guy doesn't quite produce enough voltage. And I think what was happening was it needed to get enough voltage or high enough voltage to actually start putting current into the batteries. So, we got another one, and instead of wiring them in parallel, we wired them in series. So even if the voltage is quite low, we still get a higher voltage than our batteries and current going into them. And they've been working all right, actually. They've been working pretty well. We're just coming into spring, um, and we'll see how quickly the packs actually charge up when we start using them in anger. So when I said the original solar panel couldn't actually keep this charge controller going, it's actually this display here, and I guess the power supply is for that USB. So those draw a little bit of current all the time, um, and actually that original panel couldn't power that and put charge into these. So it ended up being that these uh, batteries were actually just powering this display, and this voltage was just dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. So what's wrong with our current charge controller? Well, it was advertised that it worked with lithium ion batteries. But when we cycle through to get the maximum voltage that will charge these cells to, we get 2.7. So if we try and change that, there we go, because we want to go lower. These batteries go down to about, or go up, sorry, say, should I say, to about 4.2 volts. So 3 times 4.2 is 12.6. So it will go up to 15 but only as low as 12.7. So actually, this guy's no good. He's very much set up for lead acid batteries. So I've gone online and found one that is supposed to be for lithium ion batteries. And guess what? It's green. Okay, hopefully this one goes down to the voltages that we need. So first things first, let's take this guy out. Ta-da! Okay, so now we can have a little look-see uh, at if we can get low enough on the voltage. Hey, it's already set up. And that's actually about the sort of voltage that I was looking to set it up at. So these are these packs are 3S, so three in series. Each cell can go up to 4.2, so that gives us the maximum pack voltage. So these terminals here, these terminals here, of 12.6. Uh, Given that these are quite old cells, I kind of wanted to knock that down a bit. So if I take 0.1 out of, off of each cell um, and just don't take it up to the highest charge voltage, that gives me about 12.3. So 12.2, I'm happy with that. Awesome. That makes that a bit easier. It's worth noting, I think, that even though these look the same, uh, they're not. And there's quite a few that I've seen that are in this green color. Um, that actually say explicitly they can't do um, lithium ion cells. So they're probably this hardware underneath, just with a green sticker on. So if you go looking yourself, just make sure that it actually does say that it's for lithium ion batteries uh, and double check as well on the, uh, the voltages that it goes down to. So with two out of three of our problems solved, it's now time to look at trying to get some power out of this power wall so that we can power our, um, our pillar drill, which is one of the main reasons for setting this all up in the first place. So as you can see, we've added on a XT60 connector here because 
we've gone and got ourselves a LiPo battery. Now these guys are designed to give massive currents. So they're normally used for your quadcopters or your, your little racing cars and things like that. So these guys can produce, well, what's that? 35C it's rated to. So 35 times that current is uh, is what it could, what this guy can actually produce. Whereas opposed to these, probably only give me about four amps before they start shit themselves. Um, right. So let's plug this guy on and see if it fixes our problem. Um, mm, hmm. It's not pretty, but it does for our quick test. So power wall with extra power. Let's try the hairdryer test. Speed one, that works all right. Speed two. It works. It works, uh, which was more than last time at least, but it deals, does still set off the alarm on that, um, on that converter. Out of interest, should we just try this guy? Now I'm not holding out much hope, but as soon as we pulled him out, let's give it a go. Nope, not even, well, I was gonna say not even close. At least it gets to, to turning the chuck a little bit before it completely turns itself off. But it looks like we need more power. Q, more power. Aha! I wonder how deep this rabbit hole goes. Oh well, let's make some more packs. Before we build our new packs, Let's just check how the old ones are doing. So let's just check this first one. I think that goes that way around. 2S, that's not right. 2S, nope. Oh, come on. Hmm, those cells aren't particularly close. And looks like this wire is probably broken inside. There we go. Yep, that one is broken. Okay, uh, so we got a little one to fix there. Let's check this guy. Okay, 3S, that's good. Okay, four. Ah, those are all pretty close. So that one is going all right. And the last one. Okay. Oh, that's a bit high. That's low. Okay, that's not good. We are overcharging these cells. Um, and it looks like probably a cell in this middle pack has actually died. So our original plan to not use BMSs with these, or at least balance boards or, or something like that, um, is not a good idea given that I think some of these old cells are just, yeah, not very happy. I think we might, rather than just get a balancer and occasionally check these, because clearly I haven't over the six months that this guy's been running, um, I think I might remake these packs with some balance boards, get some new balance boards for the new packs as well, um, just to stop this happening. Um, I guess I could just check them more periodically. Uh, and if I find a duff cell like this one, I can take that duff cell out and replace it rather than having a duff cell in there and not knowing about it because everything gets balanced nicely. Um, I think weighing that up against not checking like I have now, overcharging cells and potentially writing off the whole pack, uh, I think maintenance free is probably the way we want to go. So balance balls it is. This guy to get remade, well, all of these to get remade. Best get something in to, to take down the, um, the voltages of these guys pretty quick. And also check out what our actual voltage is on this one as well. Bugger.
new cells have arrived, it's time to get ready to design the packs. Now the first thing I like to do is, even though these have been tested, they've had their capacity measured, they're supposed to be good, um, I like to just double check and make sure that we've got a decent voltage. So it looks like that all these are reading about the same voltage. So we'll go through and check all of those. If any are low, then they're probably duff cells um, and we'll get rid of them. So that's why we've got enough here to build our pack, plus a few spares, just in case there's any duff ones in this. Whilst we're going around and measuring all the voltages of these guys, we're also gonna put them into our spreadsheet so that our algorithm can work. So what I've done is put them into a grid here. So this is 10 by six, because we've got enough cells here to make two more packs. Um, I've cut out this box just so that they can live in that grid. And I find that's really handy because when you compare this to our spreadsheet, um, it's really easy after the algorithm's done its thing to then say, okay, it's this cell mixed with this cell next. Um, and I just found that was a really nice and easy way to, to get the data out of the computer and relate it to actually individual cells rather than going through and maybe trying to number each one or something like that. Okay, this is the boring bit. Okay, enough with the montage. Right, so let's talk about the BMS. Now, what does this guy do? So the battery management system, BMS, uh, has got a couple of main functions. So one is to balance the, um, the individual strings, so to make sure they're all about the same voltage. And two, to control the output of the battery and make sure that we don't actually damage it. So let's take a little closer look at this guy. Now, we can see that there's a couple of main circuits on here. There's these string of three that look identical. These are actually used to balance the BMS. So the little resistors down the bottom are there to actually dissipate some energy. Um, it's a little bit wasteful, but it, it doesn't actually use that much energy to, uh, to balance them out. And then these big MOSFETs down here, these control the output. So these actually turn the battery off when, it gets, when the voltage gets a little bit too low so that you don't damage the cells. So why do we actually need a BMS? We didn't put them in the original packs. So the reason why we thought we could get away with it is because we matched all the cells, they should actually charge and discharge about the same. So we wouldn't actually need the balance circuit. And then we've got the solar charge controller, which would actually control the output of these and make sure that we didn't over discharge them. As we've gone through, we've found a few cells which uh, <laughs> Are not very happy and have killed over and died because we're using secondhand cells. So just for that extra peace of mind, we're going to put them in. Strictly speaking, we don't really need it. Um, so uh, having used these for a bit, they've actually stayed really well in balance. Um, even though, you know, we've had that dead cell or two, when we checked, all the other batteries seemed about right. But for some extra peace of mind uh, and zero maintenance, we're going to put these in anyway. So let's crack on. Now that we've got BMSs on the old packs, as well as the new packs, let's go wrap these up in some green heat shrink so they look a little bit less dodgy. Just like this. So now all the new packs are plumbed into the power wall, it's time for the acid test. So our inverter switched on, let's give this guy a go. Fingers crossed we've got enough juice this time. <laughs> We get a little beep from the inverter as it first turns on. I guess that's just the voltage dripping. Dripping? The voltage dropping. Just to start turning this chuck. But after that, away she goes, she's nice and happy. 
Let's see if we can take some load. First things first, aluminium. Up next, some steel. Beautiful. So that's gonna be it for this video. I am so glad we managed to get this pillar drill working. We've got a few more planned upgrades for the power wall, but you'll have to wait for another video for that one. So I hope you enjoyed watching and we'll see you next time on VIX Projects. Mm -hmm.